Okay, we're still going to be in Genesis. We're going to cover a couple of stories this year in Genesis. We're going to go through some of the fathers of the nation of Israel. The first one we're going to look at is Father Abraham. That's why we sang that song, Father Abraham has many sons. And we'll learn a little bit today why the song says he has many sons. And many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them. So are you. If you believe on Jesus Christ. That's right. Isn't that right? So we're going to look at some of the verses here. I've got some pictures for you from this story of Abraham. And there's a lot we can talk about with Abraham. I've only got pictures for some of the story. And we'll talk a bit of, uh, about other things as well. What we see here in Genesis 12, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, is Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. As you can see there, he's, God has called Abraham out of his country. So what did God say? God said to Abraham, I want you to go, let's not swing our legs, boys. Let's sit quietly, please. God said, I want you to go, leave your hometown, leave your country, and go somewhere where I'm going to show you. Abraham didn't know where he was going to go. Can you imagine if God said that to you? God said, you know what? I want you to pack your bags, pack your things, and leave your house, and you're not know, you don't know where you're going. I'm going to show you once you get there. All right, so Abraham left not knowing where he was going. He says, I will make of thee a great nation. Ah, this is a flag here. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So what does God say to Abraham? He says, I'm going to want you to get you out of your country. And he says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of, of the nation, all families of the earth be blessed. Wow, what a promise that he gave to Abraham. He says, hey, people that bless you, I'm going to bless them. People that curse you, I'm going to curse them. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot with him and Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Wow, so this is quite late in Abraham's life, isn't it? How old is Abraham? 75 years old when this happened. So he packs up, this is Sarah here, and he leaves with Lot, his nephew, in and leaves their hometown. And Abraham took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son, so that's who these two people are. And all their substance. So you see how they packed everything that they had? Imagine if you packed everything you had in your room and you just left not knowing where you were going. And all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And when they got there, they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came. So they came out of the Ur of the Chaldees and they got into the land of Canaan. All right, but Abraham didn't know that when he left. This is what God told him to do. And when he got there, there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So he had to leave his hometown. Our craft is going to be a little bit related to that. And you see, the first thing God asked Abraham to do is he left his hometown, didn't know where he was going to go. Now we're looking at Genesis 15. So this is a different chapter now. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. So he's sleeping. And God speaks to him in a vision. He says, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. So what's a shield? Something that protects you. And a reward is like a prize, isn't it? Like precious stones. Yeah, like a reward. But he's talking about a different type of reward. Even more valuable. That's God himself. God says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? seeing I go childless. So you see what was Abraham's, one of Abraham's issues is that he didn't have any children because his wife was barren. His wife couldn't give birth to get pregnant with a child. So God is saying here, he's going to be a great reward. And he's saying, hey, what are you going to give me? Because I don't have any children. I go childless. And the steward of my house, this is his servant, is this Eliezer of Damascus. And he brought him forth abroad and said, so this is, uh, we skipped over a few verses now. So God is now saying, answering Abraham, look now toward heaven. So what does that mean? When you look toward heaven, which way are you looking? Are you looking this way? No, you're looking this way. You look toward heaven. 
and tell the stars. What does that mean? Count them. You ever tried to count the stars at night? You look up, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's more than you can count up there. When it gets darker, you realize how many millions and millions of stars there are. If thou be able to number them. So he's saying, hey, look up to heaven. Simon, sit properly, please. Take your feet off the chair. If thou be able to number them. Look, so he's looking up at the heavens. And I said unto him, so shall thy seed be. So isn't that amazing? He's saying, hey, you don't have a child, but if you look up to heaven and you look at all the stars, that's how many children you're going to have. And he believed in the Lord and he counted to him for righteousness. So what is that a picture of? So we have Abraham leaving. That's a picture of him following God, not knowing where he's going. And what's this? This is a picture of him believing the gospel. Right? So I believe Abraham was saved before this, but this is a picture where God made a promise to him. Didn't he? God made a promise and Abraham believed that promise and the Bible says it was counted to him for righteousness. Now I don't have pictures for the rest of the story but if you know the story that promise child physically was Isaac. Remember? So eventually Sarah gave birth gave birth to one child, Isaac. And what did God tell Abraham to do? Who knows the story? to test whether or not Abraham loved God. God said to him, hey, I want you to sacrifice your only son, the one that you love, Isaac. And Abraham, why was Abraham willing to do it? You remember he went up on the mountain and he was going to sacrifice his son and God said, stop, you know, there's a ram. I'm going to sacrifice the ram instead. Why did Abraham... Why was Abraham willing to kill his own son to sacrifice him to the Lord? Well, it's because he knew that if he sacrificed his son to the Lord, God would raise him up again. God would bring his son back from the dead because he knew that the Messiah would come and be raised from the dead. But instead of God letting Abraham kill his own son and sacrifice him, he passed the test because he was willing to, but then before he did it, God stopped him and then said, there's a ram, behold a ram in the thicket. And then he sacrificed the ram instead. So you see here, these are the stories we learned about Abraham today. One, God called him out of his country to go somewhere where he didn't even know he was going. That's the faith that Abraham had in God. But also, God made a promise to Abraham that, hey, even if you don't have children now, one day you're going to have children, this multitude of the sea. And that one child he got was Isaac. Right? And then he was tested and he passed the test. So what is the picture of Isaac? The picture of Isaac, Isaac uh, Abraham's only son, is the same when God sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But God did sacrifice his son for us. He died on the cross, he was buried and rose again, and he did that for our sins. Now there's a promise. Remember how God made a promise to Abraham? Well, God's making a promise to you. God says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we've got to be like Abraham. We have to believe the Lord so it is counted to us for righteousness. Okay? So you see how the story of Abraham ties in very closely with the story of Jesus Christ because it's teaching us about God's promise to us and we put our faith on that promise through Jesus Christ. So the story of Isaac and that becoming a great nation, that is a physical example of Jesus Christ because Abraham believed God and through that, that's why he's called Father Abraham because he's the father of our faith. 